Throughout their 40-year journey through the wilderness, from Egypt to the promised land of Canaan, the Israelites were fed by manna and quail. Now they have entered the promised land, and the manna ends. But this time, they need not fear starvation, for they're in a land where they are able to prepare their own meals. From the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verses 9 through 12. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. On the evening of the fourteenth day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. Here is the first lesson. We'll read Psalm 32 on page 230. We'll read the psalm responsibly. I'll read the odd number of verses. You read the even. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy, Happy are, are they, they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, guilt and, and in whose spirit, spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. We toggle back to our second letter from Paul to the Corinthians this morning. And Paul speaks about how Jesus as the Christ. And keep in mind, Christ was not Jesus' last name. He was not Jesus Christ. He was Jesus the Christ. Christ is the Greek word for the Hebrew word Messiah, which means Savior, or Rescuer, or Deliverer. In this case, Paul is writing to the Corinthians and pointing out to them that God has given them a wonderful gift. I don't know how many of you saw the Academy Awards last week. But maybe the next day at the market or at the workplace, you spoke to your friends all about how Leonardo DiCaprio won the Oscar for Best Actor and how The Revenant should have been the, the winner or how come Star Wars didn't get nominated for everything. How come we can do that but can't share with other people what we know about Jesus? It's a simple proclamation to other people of what we have experienced. An ambassador is a representative of another nation, and they represent the nation from which they come while they're in another land. Paul tells us that we are ambassadors for Christ. From Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter five, verses 16 through 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. 
See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Here at the second lesson. Throughout our Lenten season, on Sunday mornings and in our Wednesday evening worship services at the various Lutheran churches, we've been hearing from the good Dr. Luke. Luke's gospel is the most inclusive of the four. He's the one who writes the stories about how Jesus reaches out and how the Samaritans play a significant role in the kingdom of God unlike the Jewish people who felt the good news was for them only. Probably one of the greatest stories of inclusion and acceptance is the story of the prodigal son. Now, as we listen to it this morning, and then I preach on it in a few minutes, let's keep in mind that we can look at this story from three different perspectives. We can look at it from the point of view of the prodigal who made some bad life choices, ran away from his father, realized what he had done and desired to come back. We could look at it from the patient papa, who waited and hoped that someday his son would return to him. And then we have the pouty son, who was unhappy that his father had thrown a party for the brother who had returned. So we call this the parable of the prodigal, the patient, and the pouty. We rise to the good news of the gospel. This is the gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. 
He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 